Welcome to Electron Online, and now let's take a look at something called the Doppler shift. Now, most of the time when we hear the words Doppler shift, we associate it with sound. For example, when we stand by the side of a highway and we see a car driving by, it kind of sounds like this. Mm -hmm. We hear a higher frequency when the car is coming towards us and a lower frequency when the car is moving away from us. That's called the Doppler shift. And the result is, if we have it illustrated here, let's say we have a source of some sound that's moving towards us with some velocity v, and the wavelengths are then packed closer together, so the observer hears a higher frequency because the waves are now shorter, they've been pushed closer together. If the object's moving away from us, it elongates the distance between the wavelengths, the observer hears a lower frequency because now we, we hear a, a uh, longer wavelength. Turns out light is exactly the same way. Light is waves, it's energy being carried by waves. And so let's say we have a source like a star, and let's say that we look for a specific wavelength of light, let's say the H alpha line with a wavelength of 656.3 nanometers. That's a really nice reddish color coming from hydrogen. But if the object is moving towards us, it will push the wavelengths closer together, therefore the observer will see a higher frequency and shorter wavelengths, and so light that may have left the, um, the star with a wavelength of 656.3 nanometers because of the motion of the star will observe it at a lower wave or, or a smaller wavelength or a higher frequency at 655.3 nanometers, for example, one nanometer smaller than it was before, which would be an indication that the star is actually moving towards us. Now, if the star is moving away from us, just like with the sound, then the wavelength would be longer, so we'd hear a lower, we would hear a lower frequency, we would see a lower frequency, and because of the longer wavelength, and let's say that the source was, again, the H alpha line at 656.3 nanometers, we would observe it at a longer wavelength, and so that would then be an indication that the star is moving away. Just like with sound, the faster the object is moving, the greater the shift, the greater the Doppler shift. And again, with light, it's the same thing. The faster the star is moving towards us, the more the wavelength will be shifted. And the, the faster the star is moving away from us, again, the more the wavelength will be shifted in the opposite direction. So longer wavelengths if the star is moving away from us, and shorter wavelengths when the star is moving towards us, which means if we can then measure the wavelength of that light and know what it should be if it wasn't moving, for example, very specific wavelengths of hydrogen or helium or some other element, then we can actually figure out how fast the star was moving either towards us or away from us. So we can determine if it's moving, we can determine if it's moving towards us or away from us, and we can determine how, how fast it's moving towards us, away from us. A tremendous tool in astronomy by discovering this particular fact that, yes, light, just like sound, experiences a Doppler shift if the source of that light is moving either towards us or away from us. A great tool. In the next videos, we'll actually show you how that's all calculated and how we find out how fast the objects are moving relative to that Doppler shift.